योगी राम सूरत कुमार योगी राम सूरत कुमार योगी राम सूरत कुमार जय गुरु भगवान श्री योगी राम सूरत कुमार की सर्व योगी राम सूरत कुमार grateful as we are we have offered this one hour nama sankirtan at the lotus feet of bhagwan celebrating this opportunity given to us by his generosity now we shall see some glimpses of how bhagwan helped guided and protected people in his spiritual ministry most of it remained a secret as bhagwan himself put it that what mattered to him most was his father's work and meeting people and blessing them was only a small 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 fraction of his huge cosmic work which he called his father's work yesterday we saw how she venugopal of tiruvannamalai came to bhagwan and how he put up a board on the wall opposite to bhagwan's place saying a reincarnation of god is living here do not dirty it and then we came to know how bhagwan called him inside made him sit next to himself took his hand on his thigh and blessed him made him understand why he did not want that board there how it would draw the attention of some evil forces which would block father's work which would trouble him that father's work may not happen in full swing she went to gopal had a problem from childhood some being away this is nice outside okay so he used to have trouble with breathing often he would find his nose blocked after that it would be a great struggle for him to breathe in and out more so when he lay down so most of the nights when he had to attack attack of this disorder he had to sit through the whole night drawing in breath as much as he could which was very little he found it so difficult at one point he was unable to breathe any more 
he had to resort to a doctor for treatment. So they went to Pondicherry, consulted a doctor there, and the doctor said that a nerve was blocking the way, the path of breath, that an operation had to be done to remove that so that the pathway would be clear again for him to breathe in and out. But then they said, it could not be done immediately, you have to come after ten days. So the next a few days passed and there were only one or two days left before he went to Pondicherry for the operation. Suddenly it struck him to go to Bhagwan, take his blessings for the operation. He was a little scared of the operation, so he wanted Bhagwan's blessings before the operation took place. When he went there, Bhagwan seated him, but then Bhagwan himself was lying down. Resting, it seemed like he was resting, and uh, Venugopal knew that Bhagwan was awake, so he started. He said, Swami, I have to go to Pondicherry for an operation. I'm not able to breathe. So as soon as he started saying, Bhagwan was lying down till then, immediately got up. And then he pulled out a cigarette. And while smoking, he asked Venugopal for other details. Bhagwan knew that he had a mandi, a shop where the produce of the farmlands of the farmers, he would collect them and market them wholesale. And of course there's bound to be, because of the vegetables coming from various places, there is bound to be a lot of dust there. So Swami asked him, is it because of the dust that you have to face in your mandi, in your shop? Venugopal was surprised because how did he know there would be a lot of dust there and he had to deal with it every day. And then he said, Swami, I, I had it right from my childhood, this tr trouble with breathing. Oh, you had it from your childhood. And then he said, what did the doctor say? So Venugopal submitted all the details to Bhagwan. Then Bhagwan called him near, so near, so close, <coughs> he was almost touching Bhagwan. And then Bhagwan put his middle finger and the ring finger and stroked his nose twice. And after that, Bhagwan said, now Venugopal is okay. So Venugopal thought he didn't have to go to the hospital at all, that Bhagwan, because even while he was stroking, Venugopal was thinking, okay, here Bhagwan is touching me, so this trouble would be gone completely. I wouldn't have to go to the hospital, get the operation done. There would be no need for it. So when Bhagwan stroked, after he did that, he asked, Venugopal asked, Swami, do I have to go to the hospital tomorrow? Yes, you have to go to the hospital. Venugopal was a little disappointed. Bhagwan said, yes, you have to go consult the doctor and do what he says. 
And then he blessed him nicely and left him. So here Venugopal was thinking, Bhagwan touched that so the operation would be tolerable and he would be able to put up with that and there would be fast recovery. When he went there in the morning with his people, the doctor said, Okay, you have come now, we'll get you admitted in the hospital room and uh, we shall have the operation done in the evening. He went through the tests and then again Venugopal asked the doctor, Doctor, the operation has to be done. Yes, yes, we will we'll get it done in the evening. And of course he had to do one or two tests also. And after that, when Venugopal came out with a heavy heart, he had to go through the operation. The doctor called him again. He said, come here. Now you see this test? See what it was like ten days before when you had come, it was like this. Now you see how it looks. There is no block at all here that I see the new one. How did this happen? Where did you go? Did you go to some other doctor? Did you have an operation done? You must have gone through some treatment somewhere. Then Venugopal was besides himself with joy. This is exactly what he expected, what he wanted to happen. And this has happened. All the time, with a heavy heart, he was thinking that he had to go through the operation despite Bhagwan's blessing. He was even a little depressed, but then now the whole thing revealed that there was no block, just as he expected, just as he wanted. The doctor said, where did you go? Which doctor? Then he said, there's a doctor of doctors in Tiruvannamalai and he had done the operation on him just by stroking the nose with two fingers. Now it was the turn of doctor, doctor's turn to be surprised. He was saying, yes, your Swami has done something, just see how clear this path is. So now you'll be able to breathe properly, there'll be no need for operation. You can go. What a joy it was for Renugopa. Just imagine, just put yourself in his place. You are very scared of an operation to be done and all that you have to go through before and after the operation. And here, he just went there to seek blessings from Bhagwan, and he had already done that with just a stroke of his fingers. Venugopal was jumping in joy. So this has happened time and again to many, many people in different circumstances, in different ways. This curing, the Bhagwan said meeting people and blessing them is only a very small fraction of this beggar's work. This was happening repeatedly. Now, hadn't Bhagwan said before, money and time spent on this beggar will never go waste, it will only multiply. Venugopal spent twenty-five rupees for the plate that he put up on the wall opposite. He even had a desire to be appreciated by Dr. Udayamurthy. But you see 
how it has drawn him closer to Bhagwan, and with the stroke of his finger, Bhagwan had done this huge treatment for him, for nothing. Those twenty-three years, how he was struggling, night after night after night, not being able to sleep, just sitting up, going through misery after misery. All that was gone with just a stroke of a finger. This is Bhagwan's gift of grace to all those who serve Him. Let us see another case. At least here, Bhagwan was physically present that Venugopal could approach Him. Here is the case of Swati Subramanian. He once, he had come to see Bhagwan at the age of nineteen in Sanadhi Street house, but he was not allowed inside for some reason or the other. It had happened with Bhagwan because sometimes, sometimes when Bhagwan was very busy with some work, he would not want the presence of others that would spoil his father's work. Sometimes for different reasons, he would not allow people inside. I had gone through it umpteen times. But to hear Swati Subramaniam thought, okay, okay, it's a VIP place, it's meant only for rich people. They may not allow beggars like this, the poor people like me. Each one thinks according to their mindset. This was the first impression that Swati Subramanian had formed and much later he came to know more about Bhagwan and his generosity. And I think it was 2006 or something, he had somebody after this, after Bhagwan's Mahasamadhi, somebody gave him a photograph and uh, he was he started to keep it with him in the house and worship. In 2006 or something, he had jaundice. He was so seriously sick, that's what he says. He gave a talk, he shared his experience in one of those functions here in Ashram. He said he was so sick and the sickness was so severe, he reached a critical stage. There was no hope for him and his mother was sitting and crying and crying and crying, praying to Bhagwan Yogi Ram Kumar, chanting his name. Swati Subramanyam found it very disturbing. He told his mother to go to sleep. Go, 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 lie down, go to sleep. And in the middle of the night, she woke up again, came and awakened Swati Subramaniam and said, See, do you see, do you smell this? See, there's a very strong cigarette smell in the house. And she was so scared. She said, there could be somebody here present in the house. Somebody is surely smoking. Maybe thieves have come. She was very alarmed and scared because cigarette smell of Bhagwan was new to her. She did not know anything about it. She was very scared. She woke him up and said, please go look around, see if there are thieves around. There is somebody here, there is this very strong smell of smoking. But Swati Subramanyam was very tired, he was sick and 
he did not feel like getting up and looking around. So he said, no, 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 don't worry, don't fear, there's nothing of the sort, you go to sleep. Though he contained her, soon he had a dream. He fell asleep and he had a dream and in the dream he said, in the room, in a corner, he found Bhagwan and me standing there and Bhagwan was telling me something. And then Bhagwan came towards him, gave an apple to eat, blessed him and disappeared. The next day morning when he woke up, he still had the taste of the apple. It was so, so real to him. He had the taste of apple and that was the day he had to go for test. He was naturally overwhelmed by the experience of the dream He also knew it was a dream, so he didn't know what to make of it. But when he went for the test, very much in the fashion of Venugopal, what the doctor said to Venugopal, here again the doctor, after testing him, he asked, did you go for treatment, did you go to any doctor, did you go through any treatment? The doctor was repeatedly asking, and Subramaniam said, no, I didn't go to any doctor, no treatment. But the doctor was surprised, no, no, you just see, 90% of your jaundice is gone, there is very little left. How did this happen? And that's when Swati Subramaniam knew that what happened in the dream was no dream. In the dream, the dream Bhagwan came and he gave him the dream apple and he ate the dream apple. In the dream, though it was a dream, while it happened, it was so, so, so real. So much so in the morning, he woke up with a taste of apple in his tongue. So you see, the great master can connect with us in any way. He can connect with us physically or he can connect with us in our astral plane, in our dream. Bhagwan had often said, whenever he comes in anybody's dream, it is no dream, it is real. Sometimes he could not, what he could not do physically on the physical plane, the great masters would do it on the astral plane. So this can happen to anybody even now, people who are afflicted with something or the other, if they chant Bhagwan's name and pray to him, here Swati Subramanian's mother was doing it for him. He was in no state to do anything. He was so sick, critically sick. But his mother was doing it for him. And Bhagwan responded. This can happen to anybody today. All we have to do is chant His name with faith and pray and pray and pray. The chanting and the prayer will get the job done. Now after Swati Subramanyam, the Taradhana function, 
Shri Ravi from Kerala, an architect, a very important person for us because it is he who designed the Pradhan Mandir, the ashram as it looks today. He is an architect from Kerala, Trichur. Dr. Radha Krishnan, the neurosurgeon who became a devotee of Yogi Ram Sarutmar Bhagwan, when Bhagwan fell sick in 93 and shifted to Sudama, Dr. Radha Krishnan came to Sudama, stayed for a few days and gave him the treatment. Because Bhagwan was very sick and there was nobody to attend on him in Sanadhi Street house, after my so much begging, he finally consented to come to Sudama for three days. So after he shifted to Sudama, things became worse and Dr. Radha Krishnan had to be called. And Dr. Radha Krishnan started his treatment. Staying in Sudama, he was treating Bhagwan for this viral fever. And he said the condition was so bad, he had to give, he had to stay on and continue the treatment for some time. By then the ashram ground had come into the scene and Bhagwan was looking for an architect for the drawings of the ashram. The old group had done a drawing which was not acceptable to Bhagwan. At the time, Dr. Radha Krishnan stepped in, the neurosurgeon from Trichur. He brought an architect, Ravi, from Trichur. As soon as Bhagwan saw him, he came to Sudama and they were all seated in Sudama Puja room. Bhagwan said, I happened to be there with Bhagwan. Bhagwan said, Mr. Ravi, this beggar would like you to draw a diagram of the ashram to come up. And then Bhagwan added, he put a condition to him, he said, there should be beauty, divinity and durability. Please keep this in mind. And accordingly, make a drawing for the ashram. And also, he said, this beggar wants you, dear friend, to build an ashram where all kinds of people will come. Mr. Ravi, the architect, asked Bhagwan, please brief me about it. Give me a brief sketch of what you want. Bhagwan immediately asked for a paper and a pen. He drew four squares and gave it to him. Looking at it, Mr. Ravi thought, oh, this has to be a very small ashram. Swami wants a small ashram only. Then Bhagwan said, No, Mr. Ravi, this beggar would like you to construct a hall where 3,000 people could gather comfortably, could be seated comfortably. Then Mr. Ravi knew that this was going to be a big project for him. Then Bhagwan asked him, because Bhagwan added to this 3,000, he also mentioned the Swagat Mandapam, the abode and the cottages to be built. So now Mr. Ravi, the architect, knew it was to be a big project 
and he had to really work hard. Then Bhagwan said, how many days you will take, Mr. Ravi? The architect said, Swami, please give me one month. I will surely finish within a month and bring it. Bhagwan laughed and said, No, Mr. Ravi, this beggar can give you only two weeks at the most. You have to be ready with a drawing. Mr. Ravi did not know what to say because the one who was putting the condition was a Swami, a great master, a realized soul, a God to thousands of people. So he nodded and said, by your grace, I would be able to do that. Bhagwan smiled and let him go and in two weeks he was back with the drawings and Bhagwan was very, very pleased with the drawing. He said, Mr. Ravi, you have done what this beggar wanted. Now bring the estimations. Mr. Ravi said, Swami, even before we start building, we need to have at least minimum 55 lakhs. Bhagwan laughed once again, looked around, and of course, you know, we were looking at Bhagwan wide-eyed. Fifty-five lakhs? There was only fifty thousand in the bank. And we could manage another fifty thousand. So Bhagwan turned to me and asked me, Devki, how much do we have in the bank? I said, fifty thousand, we can manage another fifty thousand. There'll be one or a little more than that, one lakh or a little more than that. Then Bhagwan, Mr. Ravi looked at Bhagwan in disbelief. What is he saying? Fifty-five lakhs, we cannot start to work without some money in the bank. And these people are saying fifty thousand, one lakh. How can you even get to start? Then Bhagwan declared with a radiant face, he said, This is my father's ashram. It's not this beggar's ashram, it's my father's ashram. And my father will give whatever is needed. Whatever is necessary, my father will give. Don't worry. And then everybody dispersed. So there were times, very many difficulties for Mr. Ravi. During the course of the building, but every time he says, he said that day while he spoke, that Bhagwan's drive was behind him. Driving him on, somehow making him complete the work. Soon there was a group of people, somebody from Karnataka, somebody from Andhra, and Mr. Ravi from Kerala. It was once again an integration of the people from different states. And do you know this huge Pradhan Mandir with only two pillars? with 25,000 square feet can accommodate up to 4,000 plus people in the hall. <coughs> was being built not by experts. One Mr. Mukhya used to come from Pondicherry, the Union Territory. And there was somebody from Karnataka and Mr. Ravi from Kerala and Mani from Tamil Nadu, from Chennai. So you see it was a combination, but they all worked 
for the sake of Bhagwan. At one point things were really getting difficult for Mr. Ravi and things were delayed. So Bhagwan called him near and asked people around, are we paying Mr. Ravi sufficiently? Vijayalakshmi Amma was the Chief Commissioner of Income Tax Kerala. She, she knew Mr. Ravi. And that by the time she had given up her job and come to the service of Bhagwan, she intervened to say, Ravi will not accept any money for this work. Bhagwan looked at him very kindly and said, Ravi, you will not take money, any money from this beggar for this work? And Mr. Ravi folded his hand and said, Yes, Swami, there is no need. I want only your blessings. Then Bhagwan put his hand deep into his pocket and pulled out a one rupee coin and put it pressed it hard into the hands of Mr. Ravi and said, Mr. Ravi, keep this safe always. The rest will be seen by my father. My father will look after you, but you keep this coin safe. That was all to it. Mr. Ravi, when he spoke, announced happily, very soon after that he got a very important job with a very high salary in an American company in the Gulf. So he took up a higher office there with a very comfortable or more than comfortable salary and he said, by Swami's grace, even now, I have kept that coin safe and I am, just as Bhagwan promised, He is taking care of our whole family nicely. My daughter, my son, they are all settled well in life. And there is no lack of anything by Bhagwan's grace. So money and time and service, you can add service, because money and time can only mean service, done to this beggar will not go waste. They will only multiply. This we see repeatedly. This uh, Pradhan Mandir, the structure of Pradhan Mandir, is in the shape of a lotus. If you look at it from the sky, the whole hall would look like a lotus, a blossom, lotus blossom. It would be a very beautiful structure and that is the way it was drawn and constructed. And imagine the workers who did the work, the engineer was just out of college, was still a student in many ways, and the workers were the local people, no experts were involved. So it is, as Lord Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, when Arjuna was scared, was afraid, was confused how he could bring himself to kill the Acharya, Pitamaha and all those relatives standing in the front. Bhagavan Krishna said, Arjuna, nimitta matram bhava, just be an instrument in my hand. I have already killed these people. You have to throw your arrow and take the name for it. That's all you have to do. You are only an instrument in my hand. I've already done the work. 
I have removed the sap from these people. At your mere throwing the arrow, the job would be done and you take the name for it. So Bhagwan has already done the work, the construction of the ashram, the energy that you see, the amazing energy that people feel when they come into the ashram and the work, the future work, everything, everything had already been conceived by Bhagwan and the work done already. All we have to do is like Arjuna, be a good instrument in his hands and so that we would do exactly what he wants us to do. So you see, one can go on narrating. Incident after incident. There are some more, but we can wait for another occasion. But enough to say how much of Bhagwan's work has gone into the structure, the construction of this ashram. I mean not only the buildings, the building of the spiritual atmosphere, the energy here, and the future work, the hard-earned tapas of the great masters is given to us for pittance. Here is Bhagwan, right in front of us with a smile on his lips and hand raised in benediction. Energy is pouring out of him. The blessings are coming in constant flow. Bhagwan is saying, why do you worry? Why do you fear? I am here. All we have to do is come into the ashram with your prayer and go back and see how your visit to the ashram helps you. There is so much. Every time you enter, you can be sure you are carrying a bag, a huge gunny bag full of blessings on your back, which would come in handy in your daily life, in your moments of difficulty. Now we shall submit today's prayer. Bhagwan. we seek your immediate divine intervention to free this entire humanity, entire humanity from the dreadful grip of this virulent virus. <laughs> 